All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. Right now, in real time, we are watching cryptocurrency accumulation happen. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum grinding upwards. Certain select altcoins grinding upwards. But why? Why are altcoins pumping? In today's video, I want to share with you the latest cryptocurrency news involving Coinbase and Bitcoin, involving OpenSea and Ethereum, as well as Litecoin, Avalanche, Algorand, and much more. Like always, check the timestamps down below in the video description. And let's jump in, starting with Coinbase. Coinbase has just applied to list crypto futures products. So the company has filed to become a member of the National Futures Association. And why this matters to you, because I know many of us aren't necessarily futures traders, this could have big regulatory implications if approved. Coinbase has taken the first step to try and list crypto futures products. We know this according to a search on the National Futures Association website and a tweet by Coinbase. In a direct quote, This is the next step to broaden our offerings and offer futures and derivatives trading on our platforms. And what's interesting is the Coinbase entity, the company that we know with the CEO, Brian Armstrong, was not the entity that filed to get approval to trade futures. Coinbase Inc. appears as not an NFA member, but Coinbase Financial Markets Inc. is a pending NFA member. So technically not the same company. It's a different CEO, different company, although for all intents and purposes, they are both still Coinbase. According to the NFA website, Coinbase Financial Markets CEO, so the different company, is Joseph Nicholson, who joined the exchange in 2018. And if you're asking why this company, why this CEO, instead of Brian Armstrong and the Coinbase company we know, Joseph Nicholson has been a registered broker with the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, for over 20 years, according to FINRA's broker check. So he does have the relationship it will probably be easier to get approval. So if they get this regulatory approval, this will be just yet another green flag that cryptocurrency, especially crypto in the US is here to stay. I'll keep you updated. And next piece of news, let's talk about crypto adoption outside of the US. Crypto adoption in Africa has surged over 1,200% in 2021 alone. And that's based on the data. According to a review by Chainalysis, the 1,200% increase in incoming cryptocurrency volume over the year is almost 50% higher than the global growth average because the rest of the world united registers an also mind-blowing 880% increase in that same period. And what are the specific regions? Well, in a direct quote, not only has Africa's cryptocurrency market grown over 1,200% by value received in the last year, but the region also has some of the highest grassroots adoption in the world, with Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, and Tanzania all ranking in the top 20 of our global crypto adoption index. So pretty self-explanatory. We can see this mind-blowing chart illustrating the Africa adoption compared to all the other regions right here. And what's even more interesting to me is just even the peer-to-peer -peer transactions, just from person to person exchanging crypto. Crypto adoption is happening. And if you're asking why, well, considering that the continent is dominated by the unbanked population, the use of P2P platforms has established itself as an easy way to move funds internally. However, the report says that almost 96% of crypto transfers in Africa are related to the remittance market. So in a lot of ways, this is where crypto is needed most. People that don't have access to financial stability, they've never had a bank account, are finally able to have some self-sovereignty, some ownership, some financial security with cryptocurrency. And for the people that do have bank accounts, in a final direct quote, if the government is strictly limiting the amount of money people can send abroad, they'll get creative and turn to cryptocurrency. In many of these frontier markets, people can't send money from their bank accounts to centralized exchanges, so they rely on peer-to-peer. -peer. Give me your thoughts on this African adoption down below. I will say that Cardano is one of the altcoins that does have strong, that is building a strong foundation of grassroots adoption in Africa as well. For perspective, year-to-date asset performance, the NASDAQ is up 19%, 
S&P 500 up 21%, gold down a negative 6% from the start of the year, yet Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano way, way up like you see right here. Real accumulation is happening. And moving forward, let's get real specific on certain altcoins. Why is Avalanche, for example, pumping? The Avalanche Foundation has just raised over $230 million to support the DeFi ecosystem. So this was a big win, a lot of money for Avalanche, and the key is here the smart money that is investing. The Avalanche Foundation has announced a significant $230 million investment from a venture capitalist group spearheaded by Polychain and Three Arrows Capital for the purpose of supporting the growth of the DeFi ecosystem and their ever-expanding list of applications that utilize the blockchain. And of course, the ever-growing Avalanche ecosystem benefits. Since Avalanche's launch in September 2020, its smart contracts platform is now providing infrastructure for over 270 industry projects, including SushiSwap, Chainlink, Circle, and The Graph, among others. And what specifically will this money be used for? The $230 million worth of capital raised through the private sale of Avalanche's native token will be allocated by the foundation across a multitude of use cases within its blockchain, including grants, token purchases, and various forms of investments and technology support. In a final direct quote from director of the Avalanche Foundation, Avalanche has quickly turned promise and potential into real-world impact and value creation for DeFi users and developers. The community of builders rallying around the network is a testament to its competitive edge, and there is still so much potential yet to be tapped at the intersection of institutional and decentralized finance on Avalanche. So as the Avalanche ecosystem develops, I will keep you updated, but let's keep moving. And before we get to the latest Ethereum and Litecoin news, I do want to take 60 seconds and give a big shout out to sponsor of the channel, BlockFi, and their Bitcoin Rewards credit card. Earn Bitcoin back on every single purchase. Earn an unlimited 1.5% back in Bitcoin on every purchase with the BlockFi Rewards Visa Signature Credit Card. See if you're pre-approved with no impact to your credit score. There's a link down below. That's BlockFi.com slash altcoindailycc. And what makes this Bitcoin Rewards card better? Because there's a lot of cards out there. Why did Altcoin Daily choose the BlockFi Rewards credit card? Well, one card, more Bitcoin, meaning there is no annual fee, which cannot be said for many, many other competitors, and no foreign transaction fees, as well as you can earn up to 3.5% back in Bitcoin during your first three months. In my opinion, this is one of the easiest ways to accumulate passively, Every single time you buy groceries, you buy gas, you earn Bitcoin back. Link down below, blockfi.com slash altcoindailycc. Check it out, link down below. And next piece of major adoption news, AMC adds Ethereum and Litecoin to their year-end crypto adoption plans. Interesting. So it's no longer just Bitcoin. They're now going to accept Ethereum and Litecoin. Tweeting on Thursday, the company's CEO announced plans for AMC to accept three other cryptocurrencies, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. And it will be interesting to see which cryptocurrencies get the most use for buying movie tickets. Because in my opinion, AMC is not getting my Bitcoin. This is like AMC saying, hey, we'll accept gold. If you want to pay us in gold, in digital gold, we'll accept it for movie tickets. Sneaky, very sneaky, AMC. You might get my Litecoin, you might get some other altcoins, but I'm keeping my Bitcoin, I'm keeping my Ethereum. Give me your thoughts, give me your mindset on this. Either way though, pretty cool to see this adoption. And next piece of news for Ethereum and NFT platform OpenSea. OpenSea's product lead is accused of using insider knowledge to profit from NFT drops. So here are the details. Users on Twitter accused Nate Chastain head of product at OpenSea, of using secret ETH burner wallets to buy NFTs before they were unloaded on the front page of OpenSea. What gave him away was making the mistake of sending the profits to his own public address. Here was the first tweet that kind of accused him of this. Hey OpenSea, why does it appear that your product lead has a few secret wallets that appears to buy your front page drops before they're listed and then sells them shortly after the front page hype spike for profits 
and then tumbles them back to his main wallet with his punk on it. So because OpenSea's product lead owns a crypto punk and he made that public, that's how they were able to track his wallet. And OpenSea is looking into this. Yesterday, we learned that one of our employees purchased items that they knew were set to display on our front page before they appeared there publicly. And now OpenSea is doing an investigation. Thoughts on this? I mean, it is a positive. OpenSea will not stand for this. They are looking into this. In my opinion, it's just pretty cool, the power of the blockchain, because if this happened in traditional markets, we wouldn't know for years, if ever, the kind of insider trading that's happening. But now this information is democratized and random people on Twitter can form these, do the research, form these opinions and ask these questions. And final piece of news, Skybridge, Anthony Scaramucci's fund, has raised $100 million for an Algorand fund, as well as files for a crypto company ETF. This one's pretty self-explanatory. So if you're wondering why Algo is bumping, it's because Skybridge is raising money to support the ecosystem. But that is the video. My name's Austin. So close. So close. But like always, see you tomorrow.